Is this pelican amazing or disappointing? Let's find out. We finally made it. Every single pelican we've reviewed has led to this. The final, currently on shelves, Halo Infinite Mega Pelican. But this set might just be a little bit of a disappointment. Let's jump into the review. At first glance, this pelican is tremendous. There are so many awesome things about it. It looks amazing and it comes with three good figures. This pelican is the largest that we've gotten from Halo Mega ever. And they added so much detail into it. It's just a fantastic build and it's super fun to build too. However, the looks here may be a little bit deceiving as throughout the building process and throughout the lifespan of this pelican, you might notice just a few major flaws. With all that said, let's jump into the review. Starting off at the front of the Pelican, the cockpit piece is completely brand new for this set. It is no longer one entire piece, but is actually two put together. We've got one piece as the frame and then the glasses behind it. The cockpit is the reason that this set appears in so many of my videos. It looks absolutely amazing. The problem is how annoying it is to put together. The two pieces just don't like fitting together and so it can be very frustrating time versus when before you would just put one piece connected to some hooks and you're done. The sides of the cockpit are similar to the NMPD one and this go around they do a very good job at giving us a perfect angle. The UNSC logo looks nice and the pieces stay together fairly nicely. There are gaps between them because that's where the hinges are but it looks pretty good. Connecting these things on top is pretty easy. You're just using these hook pieces that are connected into studs. While it looks easy, building it is frustrating and getting it to line up is even worse. Everything else looks great when it's all put together though. The side panel is very similar to the NMPD Pelican, but it has a little bit more friction, so it's a little harder to move out of place. You may have noticed a bunch of the tiles surrounding the underside of the Pelican, which looks phenomenal. I don't love that they used a turret for the gun that has handles on it for a minifigure, but I get this piece already existed, so it was probably their best option. Under that, we have a feature returning from the Halo 4 Pelican. This one is landing gear. In this go around, there are tires at the bottom and it holds up the Pelican really nicely. The other side of the cockpit is the exact same but we've got a new tile printing here that we haven't seen before. It's meant to represent the intakes that we see on the original Pelican, and the original one looks way, way better. This was made over 10 years ago. Why have we gone from this to this? It's disappointing, and I wish it was better. Despite that laziness, Mega did a really good job with the interior of the cockpit. When it's open, you can see an amazing looking control panel. The printed detail on there is so tiny and it just looks so good. It does move out of the way for a minifigure and he fits right on in there. Unfortunately, we still only get one seat in this Pelican 2. Why only one seat, you ask? Well, Mega actually did something super amazing with this Pelican and allowed you to put your entire hand through the whole thing. Really though, you can see through the entire Pelican, which is perfectly accurate to what we see in the games. There is no door separating the bay and the cockpit, but it looks really good and I'm glad that they included this. It's worth the trade-off. It fits the pilot minifigure that comes with the set perfectly, so I think they did a good job at using the space that they had, and it looks fantastic. Above the cockpit, we've talked about the printed tiles that I don't like, but they did do a great job with the caution arrows. Unfortunately, above that tile, we do have this tiny gap. It's not completely connected to everything that's behind it, so we end up with this tiny gap. I don't hate it, but it just makes me really wish we had that old piece back. The entire assembly all suspiciously moves out of the way and back down, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Right next to that, we have our wing, which is one of my favorite parts of this set. It's pretty detailed, but it still is left with a little bit of studs. Honestly, for these wings, they've nailed down the perfect formula. We have that giant piece that they're using again for the wing, which is the perfect shape for a pelican, and we even get a UNSC logo tile this time. We still have the red light on the end of the wing and two at the very front in yellow. You can also easily attach and detach these missile pods on the side of the wings, which look pretty good. No complaints on the front of the wing either. The intake looks great, just like an MPD pelican. On the back side, the engines look really good. They're very girthy. The only thing I don't love about these is that the middle just sort of looks barren. It just looks kind of lifeless, and I wish they added something there. On top top of the engine we also have these pieces which can fall off fairly easily and they're only connected with two studs. The lift on the bottom looks good, it's just sort of lifeless too. They didn't use any special parts. The wings move really well and they're on the same ratchets that we've had for years. 
the main body, the whole girth of the Pelican disc go around looks really, really good. The shaping is perfect, and I think it's better than any other Pelican we've previously seen. It's less boxy and looks more organic and just like it does in the game. The pieces they used on top for detailing are these great pieces that are sometimes small and sometimes a little bit bigger. Getting towards the tail, we have more printing that's very similar to the tiles in the front and the exact same triangular caution symbols, just a little bit smaller on one by one plates. But of course, just like every other Pelican, this one indeed has hooks at the bottom, so we can move this thing up top and get a look at the inside. The amazing thing about this thing is that it stays wherever you put it. It has just enough friction and Mega has never done this before with any of the other Pelicans. However, that amazement is shattered when we look at the inside and realize that it is very, very small. It is barely enough wide to fit one minifigure in there and only includes one seat. The interior does have quite a bit of detail and a weapons rack. However, it is overshadowed by the sheer lack of space that we have in here to do anything. However, Mega did think of that, and we'll look at that in a moment. Moving back on the top, the tail looks really good. It's very basic, but it's exactly what it needs to be, and it's even got fins this time around, which we've never had before either. There really aren't winglets on this pelican like the previous, but we do have these thrusters on the back, which look great, and they are back to their former glory like they were on the NPD pelican, and can move up and down. Unfortunately, like your mom, this pelican is thick and extremely back heavy, so it will topple over if you push it. The engine pieces on the back are the same as the front, and and they're still lifeless, missing something. The same build on the bottom is used for the lift, and it looks really good, just missing something. I never liked the tail of the Pelican more than this one. It looks so good, it's smoothed off, everything, it looks great. Under that, the ramp closes off really nicely, and the build that they have on it just looks like it's part of the Pelican. But when you pull it down, you'll see how it's changed, and it just isn't as good as the old ones. Obviously, we have the ramp on here for accuracy, but really it should be meant to put figures on it, and it just makes it more difficult when it's at this weird angle. It doesn't look right. And when you put figures on top, they'll be completely hidden. You can barely see their hands. Piece just needs to be moved. I think they did better with the older style ramp. From that though, we gotta talk about the landing struts. These are based on a mechanic on the inside, which is something we've never had before. The look of them is really nice, other than the Technic bar that we have sticking out right in the middle. On top of that, the mechanic used here is based on a rubber band. And if you've seen my channel before, you know I hate Lego and rubber bands. Lego or Mega, every time they add rubber bands, it just seems to create unnecessary problems, like the gap between the chassis of the Pelican and this strut on the right side. Or the fact that these things used to spring up really nicely, but now it barely wants to move. In order to figure out why the rubber bands are so annoying, we have to open this thing. By removing this piece, we can then now move everything out of the way to completely open this pelican, which is something we've never had before. This was a good idea. This thing uses ball joints to keep it connected, and they are very strong, so it can feel like you're breaking this thing when you're opening it. And this is where Mega made up for the lack of space in here. Pulling it apart allows you to see all the details, and also the rubber bands that are under stress. Ignoring those and the mechanic I don't love, we do have a weapons rack in here, as well as a fire extinguisher. Next to the weapons, we also have a cool little printed tile on the side. On the other side, we have our single chair as well as the same tile that is printed. I appreciate the fact that they have a spot for both characters in this, but one chair and a pelican? Come on. We do get a cool printed 2x2 tile over here that has some schematics of a Spartan. It's just there to cover up the mechanic they use. In the middle, we also have that first cutscene from Halo Infinite, or the trailer we see, and it is an awesome little way to put Master Chief on here. Too bad it's kind of hard to do so. I might just be stupid, but it's a cool mechanic nonetheless. And when you finally get it to work, it looks really good. You can throw him on there and have the pilot figure out what's wrong with him. It's kind of hard to see, but we have these cool pelican schematics in the hallway leading to Mr. Pilot. And that's your tour of the pelican. Please keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle as we close this thing up. And of course, the best thing about any mega set is a minifig. Wait, which chief is it? It's one on the left? Okay, one more time. But of course, the best thing about any mega... No, it's not that one either. You gotta be kidding me. How am I supposed to know which one it is? It's the one with the shock rifle? I don't even know which one that is. What is a shock rifle? That's not a Halo gun. Ugh, I don't get paid enough for this. But of course, the best part about any Halo Mega set is the minifigures. The minifigs are what makes this set most disappointing because none of these figures are really anything special. The Banished Hunter is exclusive, but it's so easy to get a Banished Hunter that there's really no reason to go out of your way to get this one. The pilot is great, but he's taller than Master Chief, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And Master Chief is nothing crazy. We've gotten at least 10 of these Master Chief figures. This one just looks like all the rest. Starting off with the least disappointing figure here, the Hunter isn't bad. It's just a figure that we really didn't need in this set. 
The paint job looks really good, but it's not anything crazy, and not something that we haven't gotten in cheaper sets. Shoulder armor and the shield on the side look good, and I do like the scratches that we've got on that shield, but it's just red painted detail, that's it. The back looks good, it's just like every other hunter, and the arm itself looks great too. The figure itself in a vacuum isn't bad, but when you start to add in all of the other figures that you can get for much cheaper, or that were cheaper when they released, it just seems like less of a value that you get for this hunter that comes in this $150 set. We've gotten three banished hunters, but only one covenant. The same thing can be said about this Master Chief. It's a good figure with decent detail, but in a $150 set and not in a vacuum, this figure isn't anything special and is nowhere near as good as some of the other Master Chiefs from Halo Infinite that we've gotten. The side armor is less detailed than some of the other Master Chiefs, and usually Mega will spring for really quality figures in these higher price sets, but in this one, they just didn't. It's a fine Master Chief, but since we got less figures in this one, it should have been better and higher quality. And that's when we need to talk about the pilot himself. He is taller than the Master Chief. Now, I know that this problem has been corrected since this was released, but I'm not talking about the problem how it is now. I'm talking about how it was when I bought it, and this is unacceptable. Nowhere should a Marine be taller than a Spartan. It shouldn't have shipped like this, and now I'm stuck with a Marine that's too tall. The pilot figure in this coloration is exclusive to the set, which is good, and it actually has some really nice detailing. The sleeves and the arms look good, and I like the color blue that they used. The back looks fine. It has enough detail, and I like the piece they used for the chest piece. Removing the helmet too, this is one of the best faces that Mega has ever done. It actually looks like the pilot and doesn't really look uncanny, so they did a good job here. The mold of the figure isn't technically exclusive, and you could have gotten him for $3 in this holographic form. I absolutely love this set, and displaying it is one of my favorite things to do with it. This is the Pelican with the least amount of figures we've ever gotten. It's riddled with a whole bunch of issues, but it just looks so good. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about this set specifically, and any of the other Pelicans that we've reviewed on the channel thus far. We're definitely going to need a final video comparing every single one of them all together. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please hit that subscribe button down below. It helps the channel out a ton, and you guys have been amazing with hitting 1,000 subs. That is incredible, and I'm absolutely ecstatic to keep going with you guys. But for now, I'm going to go watch the Master Cheeks TV show. We'll see you next time. Peace.